Oh, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. 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 It, it sh should never cease to amaze me that God always sets the stage for you. Hallelujah. Um, here last, um, what was it, Sunday, I think it was, that um, we was, pastor was out of town and Brother Brister was going to teach and so uh, I was MC in the service and I just felt like what well, God had told me two or three times to have a testimony service ready, you know, and I got, well, you know, I, they'd, and they know I'm, I don't follow the, the schedule too well, so I was trying to be nice and be good, but it come on me again, and I said, okay, God, and just happened to be that exactly what Brother Brister was going to teach on was our testimony, and as Brother Stevens was up here just now, he was talking about the peace of God and how you wake up in the mornings like I did this morning. Got my cup of coffee, went and sat in the recliner, opened the back door, and you heard the birds chirping, and little Annabelle was doing her, her cartwheels and wanting her treat. We got a little old dog. She thinks because she goes out and goes to the bathroom, she got to have a treat. So, <laughs> But God gives us those little things in our lives that helps us, you know, the deer and the, and the squirrels and the foxes and the little dogs that we have, little cats. But anyway, tonight I come to you and I want to bring you something that actually I got quite a while back, but I never taught. And um, when I was, was thinking about what, what God was going to have me bring to you, but it's amazing to me that Brother Stevens has no, no idea what, what is in my notes. And you would think some of us ministers get together, but we don't. But we got a common ground. We got a Savior that leads and guides us wherever we go. Hallelujah. So... Um, tonight, I want to talk. I want to pose a couple of questions to you, and uh, it's the title of my message, and it's basically this. You know, um, we we go through life, and we we get in this thing, uh, living for God, and sometimes we think we're just out there all alone. But the Bible says He'll never leave us nor forsake us. He's right there leading and guiding us. You're never alone. But uh, the question that I would have for you tonight, and I'm just going to teach you um, something that helped me when, when I found this lesson, when I had this study, was, and, and this is this, was that God's voice or not? And a lot of times us, as even, we've been in this for a while, Brother Stevens, we still wonder, is that just me or is that the Lord? Did, did I just think that or did God put that in my heart and and so I want to I want to teach us tonight or try to give you things that will help you to hear God better did I just hear the voice of the Lord or was that just me so um, hopefully I can give you some some tools some things that you can use to determine and we should we should we should search out the, the voice of the Lord. Right. We need God's voice to lead and guide us. Right. We, the Bible says to deny this flesh, put it under subjection to the spirit. Don't let this flesh, flesh lead us, but let God's spirit lead us, right. his voice. As he walked with Adam and Eve in the cool of the garden, he's, right. they, they listened to his voice. And so we as believers, we should always be alert receiving guidance from the Lord it should, and I got a lot of monitor up here feedback but we, we should uh, sometimes um, it's uncertain um, you know what is that the Lord is God is that really you you know and um, so but happily the word of God gives us some clear principles of determining what is and what is not the voice of God just as Samuel um, did in the, in the story of Samuel, how God called to him three times, and he didn't know the voice of the Lord. He didn't know 
anything about that, you know. That's why his mother wanted him in, in the house of God, you know. She, she dedicated him to the house. And when he went to the prophet three, three times, the prophet knew, hey, that's the Lord speaking to him. He said, next time you hear that, say, here, my Lord, what do you want? So um, I heard this when I was young, and I've always heard, well, I heard the Lord speak to me audibly. And I've thought that I've heard the Lord speak to me audibly, and I'm sure Brother Stevens and a lot of you other in here, people in here have have thought that you heard God so audibly tell you something. But see, the Bible says the Spirit of God now lives in us. So I want us to do something. It seems kind of crazy, but I want us to do this. I want you to keep your mouth closed, and I want you to turn to your neighbor and say something. Don't open your mouth, but say something to him, just anything. Come on, let's do it. Like, mm-hmm, mm hmm hmm Mm-hmm. 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 So you know what you just said. But now I would say that if your husband and wife, I can look at my wife and go, hmm, and she knows what I'm saying. But they couldn't understand what you were saying. But you understood what you were saying. The Bible says that the Spirit lives within us. And so when we hear what we think is an audible voice, is it speaking inside of us? And so we understand it? Just as you did that little exercise right there, is that the way we really hear the voice of God? So I'll be sitting somewhere and I'll say, uh, did you just hear that? And my wife will be like, no, what? And then I begin to go, okay, God, talk to me. And so we hear God as if it's audible. And um, so if you hear something and nobody else hears it, it's probably from God. Hallelujah. Because Satan can't hear your thoughts. He can't. Only thing he can hear is what you let him hear. Hallelujah. So we heard people say, I heard the voice of the Lord audibly. If you are being led by the Spirit, then the Spirit dwells within you. So was that God's voice or not. So hopefully I can give you some some uh, some information here tonight that will uh, expound on you listening to the voice of God. So Romans 8 and uh, verses 13 and 14 says this. For if we live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if through the spirit do mortify the deeds of your body, ye shall live. For as many as that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So our entitlement as Christians, frequently we, uh, we as sons and daughters of God, we're, we're led by the Spirit, or we should be. We should be, when we receive the Holy Ghost and, and God turns our lives around and the old things are passed away, behold, all things become new. We should be led by the Spirit. If you're not being led by the Spirit, then you've missed some things. And, and we need to go back and pick them up. But so often we're not certain that we're hearing the, from God, and we ask ourselves the question, was that the Lord or not? So fortunately, the Scriptures give us helpful guidelines for evolving whether, evaluating whether, whether or not potential leading is God speaking to us. So everything we need is in the Bible. I mean, from the littlest to the biggest of things, it's in the Word of God. It is in the Word of God. 1 Kings 19, 11 through 13 says this. And he said, go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And this was Elijah. He, had, he was running from that, that crazy lady, Jezebel, who was going to kill him, and he took off running and he went and was underneath a, a juniper tree, and then he went and hid in the cave, and basically the, the Lord was calling him out here. And he said, And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in, in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. 
And after the earthquake, fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. Just as I said, Brother, Brother Stevens, he set the stage for me. God comes to us in the cool of the morning, in that peaceful time. And, and I wrote down here, if chaos is going on all around you, usually God don't speak. If there's, your life is in a turmoil and, and you're all over the map, God's usually not going to speak to you. He, you've got to get quiet and let God speak to you as, 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 as a whole. Verse 13 says this, And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What dost thou do here? Elijah what are you doing here basically what he was saying is is I'm more powerful than that lady is what are you doing here so anytime you feel like running and hiding from from something you stand your ground say I'm a child of the king I have more power in one word than you have in your whole being hallelujah <laughs> The voice of the Lord often comes to us in the still, small voice, a gentle whisper rather than some dramatic form such as an earthquake, wind, or fire. You know, I've, I've heard people say, I want the Lord to get a hold of me and shake me. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. You want him to come to you in that still, small, gentle voice. I, I know you remember when you was a child and when things got real rough, <laughs> It didn't turn out too good for me. <laughs> Hallelujah. I would rather mom and daddy talk to me real gentle and sweet than say, go to the bedroom, boy. <laughs> you know, I knew there was going to be some earthquake and some wind and fire in there, boy. So, you know, I'd way rather hear a small, still voice. Hallelujah. Is, is some supposed leading makes you feel like you're caught in wind, in a high wind, set it aside. If things are in the turmoil around you, don't let that lead and guide you. Don't let it be there. God's leading is not usually obvious. It's not like the writing on the wall in Daniel chapter 5, verse 5, where he wrote on the wall and talked to, talked to the, the king and told him, you know, and Daniel come and interpreted that. But more often God's guidance to you comes in the form of a gentle whisper. I have found that the voice of God to me is most often comes gently and quietly, not forcefully or with any visible manifestations. Of course, God will come to you in a very strong. If you say, God, lead and guide me into all points and all things such as you would have me go, and you make that, God, I don't care what you have to do, get my attention. That's a dangerous prayer. It's a very dangerous prayer. But sometimes it takes that. I, I've laid before God, and I'm like, God, if there's anything in me that would keep me from doing your will and your way, God, take it out. And the fire will burn it out. Hallelujah. It will burn it out. So um, I want to give you an example of listening to God's voice. Uh, I could sit here and tell you story after story, but one really comes to my mind when I was thinking about this lesson, and it was about my mother. When we lived in, in uh, Convoy, Ohio, my mom one day had decided, as she tells us, to wash the truck, and she pulled up on a hill in the yard where it used to be, it was a stump that, you know, had been long cut down, and, and so that the water would run out of the back of the truck and everything, and as we was helping her and everything and she got to where she was rinsing and we went and and playing or whatever mom said that she got in the truck to move the truck park it back in the driveway and god spoke to her and said find out where shelly is and mom said she got out and she looked around she didn't see none of us kids and she got back in the truck and god said i said find out where shelly is she said she got out and she called for us and and she could see me and Teresa and she just knew that where me and Teresa was, Shelly wouldn't be far behind us because she was a lot younger than us. And she got back in the truck and she said she started the truck 
And she said, just as if God punched her and said, I said, find out where Shelly is. Remember, she had pulled up over this stump, and she said she got out, and she knew she had to find Shelly. She looked, and finally she found her, and Shelly had crawled underneath the truck and laid her head on that stump. And Mom said, never again will I question the voice of the Lord. She said, if I'd have pulled away, she would have said, I'd have thought her, she was that stump. And she said, of course, thank God, thank God that I listened to his voice that day. So, you know, sometimes God will come to us in that still voice, find out where Shelly is. And then he gets forceful. I said, find out where she's at. Thank God that she did. Hallelujah, because I love my little sister. Hallelujah. James 3, 14 through 17 says this, But if ye harbor bitter envy and selfish ambitions in your heart, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, and of the devil. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, where you find disorder and every evil practice. But wisdom comes from heaven, is the first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. This portion of uh, of Scripture contains a lot of insight in discerning the voice of God. So if, if things come to us, In a certain way, we should know that it don't come from God. If it comes another way, we as Christians, when we've we've sought after God's spirit and we know the Bible says, my sheep know my voice. If if some stranger comes into that fold and begins shouting, they ain't going to follow it. It's just like a lot of our pets. If somebody comes up that they don't know, they're going to bark and and things ain't going to be right. But if we walk up, they want to treat, you know. They know who we are. A lot of times we don't even have to say nothing. I just go like that. Annabelle knows that's me. You know, she'll bark her head off till she knows it's me, and then it's all good, you know. So, I mean, even the animals know. They know. So, so wisdom that is in the form of heaven is pure peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy, good fruit, impartial, and sincere. That's what verse 17 says. So ask yourself, when you're trying to discern the leading, is it pure? Is it wholesome thing? Is it godly? Is it holy? Is the leading peace-loving? Will it bring peace? Is it considerate of the rights and feelings of others? Is the leading submissive, or if others don't bear witness, will I still push to get my way? Is the leading full of mercy, or is it judgmental? Will this leading bear good fruit, or is it likely to curse or harm or do ill will? Is this leading impartial, or is it perhaps driven by my personal agenda? Is it sincere? Without hypocrisy, is it consistent with what I say and how I live my life? When we hear these voices, does it go completely against the way we live our life? It's probably not good then. If you're trying to live your God and pattern it after godly ways and something comes to you and it goes completely against what you believe and how you live your life, it's probably not from God. So uh, by contrast, James wrote, wisdom that is in the form of heaven is earthly, unspiritual of the devil, and characterized by envy, self ambitions disorder, and, and every evil practice in verses 15 and 16 of what I just read. By contrast, James wrote, if it's, if it's not wisdom from God and from heaven, is, it's earthly. It, if it ain't from God, it's from this earth. 
and, and this earth, the Bible says he will destroy it just like he will destroy Satan. He'll put him in, in bonds for a thousand years when he comes back. And, and he's going to destroy. So if it's from this earth, it's probably not from God. If it's from heaven, then you, you'll know. You'll, you'll have that feeling. So a, as we did above when evaluating if something is leading of the Lord, we must ask ourselves these questions. And, and I put down here several different things, so bear with me while I, I go over them. Um, I wish that I could remember a lot more stuff and teach, as some people do, without reading right off their notes. But um, So <laughs> this is one, earthly. Does this alleged leading have any sense of being earthly or carnal? If so, reject it. And I know we all get these texts. If you respond to this text in five minutes, you will be rich. Yeah, right. You know, if you don't do this and this and this and this amount of time, evil's going to come to you. Well, <laughs> it's evil. Don't respond to it. Hallelujah. Uns unspiritual, does its character even seem unspiritual, natural-based, or the wisdom of the world rather than God? If so, reject it. Is it of the devil? Do you sense even a hint of darkness, of evil, of iniquity in this leading? If so, reject it. Uh, is there any envy in it? Is there even the slightest feeling of envy in regard to another person? Reject it. Self-ambition is, is the essence of this leading to advance yourself. Remember, Lucifer fell and how he pridefully lifted himself up in God's presence. If it's self-ambition, you probably should reject it. Well, if it's self-ambition, you should reject it. Isaiah 14, 12 through 15 says this, talking about Satan. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst awake in the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend unto heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will set also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. So if it has any self selfish ambition in it, you need to remember that Satan was am selfish ambitious he had ambitions to take over god and be more powerful than he was disorder does this leading that you are pondering leave you feeling unsettled apprehensive without inner peace reject it every evil practice is there even a trace of evil associated with this leading will take you if so reject it if there's disorder of any kind in what you hear, you need to reject it. Now, now a lot of people would say, well, I don't ever hear the devil. Well, you live in this world, don't you? I promise you, he will use anything or anybody to speak stuff into your life. Any of them that I just read, unspiritual, of the devil, envy, selfish ambition, disorder, if you hear any of that as you're going throughout your day, you need to reject it out of your life. You don't need to take that as a word from God. You need to let it go. You need to let it roll off like water does off a duck's back. Have the oil of the Holy Ghost applied to your life. So when that stuff hits you, it'll roll right off of you. Don't let it, don't let it lead and guide you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's change gears here. Another big area of the consideration is the realm of gifts of the Spirit. So often we will discern that we believe to be supernatural pro prompting, but we are not certain that it is from the Lord. So a lot of times, just as I said it, it my title is, was that you really God? Is God, is that you? Is, is that, do I hear you talking to me? And I thought about yesterday as I went over, I went out to put some, I had ants. We put up a new bell box, and we went back, and things full of ants, you know. And as I got out of the truck, 
to uh, take care of the ant problem. It was real quiet there, and I thought I heard a voice. I couldn't make out the words, but then I went. I stopped, and then I started back up again, and I heard it again. And immediately I said, oh, God, are you trying to talk to me? You know, because it wasn't something harsh. It wasn't something out of the, it was, I didn't hear nothing. I, I don't know, but the only thing I can, only thing I could come to conclusions was, is that this message was for somebody tonight. This message is for somebody that you're having a hard time knowing whether God really cares about you. Well, if you'll pray and guess God, talk to me and let me listen to your words. Let me let you lead and guide me, God, in the ways and the paths of righteousness, God. Let me be your child, God. When you talk, let me hear. 1 Corinthians 12 and 7 says this. Now to each one the manifestations of the Spirit is given for the common good. Now, I told Sister back here that I had went and got some scriptures from the NIV and and forgot to mark them. But, but anyways, that's what the NIV, NIV says. Now to each one of the manifestations of the Spirit is given for the common good of us. The spiritual things is for us. Will this potential spiritual gift advance the common good? Will it be a blessing to others or just to me? So when you hear something come from God, of course, we don't want to, nothing to do with selfishness. Everything we get from God should be something that we're going to help our brother or sister or somebody in the church. Now, sometimes God will speak directly to us for us, but we should never think, we should never be selfish. Selfishness is, is the worst thing that you could probably ever be in the kingdom of God, is unselfish. You should always have your brother and your sister before you. You should always look, how can I advance my brother and my sister? Not me, Lord. God, let me decrease that somebody else might increase, and you increase, Lord. Let me, let me increase somebody else in you, God. Let me help somebody in this spiritual walk that we're in. Because that's what we're in. We're in a spiritual fight and a spiritual walk. We're in a spiritual thing. It's not, it's not so much as us in the, in the natural. Yes, we have to be in the natural to do things in the spiritual. But see, what that happens is, is when we do things in the natural and we operate in the spiritual, then we can operate in the supernatural. So remember that is when things come to you in the spiritual, you have to do them in the natural. And when you do them according to God's will, he will let you operate in the supernatural, just as David did with the stone. There was nothing in the stone. There was nothing in the slingshot. The Bible, well, history says that the slingshot was a child's toy. It was when God got behind that rock and David was able to operate in the supernatural. So when things come to you in the natural, you have it in your hand. If you give it to God and let you operate through the spirit, you will operate in the supernatural. So Corinthians 14 and 1 says this, follow the way of love and eagerly desire spiritual gifts. If what I am sensing is the gift of the spirit, does it respond, resound in my heart with love for those to who I am and I will minister to? It is, it is the things in the spirit in my heart with love for those to whom I will minister. All of us are, the Bible says, apostles of him. If you've been repented, if you've repented and you've been buried in his name and receiving the Holy Ghost, you are now an apostle of Jesus Christ. So when you go out, when you go in, when you when you're in your own house, you're a minister, you're you are an apostle of God. 1 Corinthians 14, 3 says this, But everyone who prophesies speak to men for their strengthening and encouragement and comfort. Comfort. If I'm hearing from God, will the impact of this give bring strength and encouragement or comfort? Will it hurt or wound or drag down somebody or one's self-esteem? And Brother Brister was teaching last night at, at the Bible study and and he was talking about he was wounded for our transgressions and he bore our sorrows. And he said when he looked up the word wound, that was 
that was the strongest word that they could they could put on what Jesus was wounded for our transgressions. And when he looked up the meaning in the Greek, it says to be run through. So Jesus bore our sorrows. He bore he was wounded for our iniquities. So he was run through. So um, if you if you, if something comes to you and you need to ask yourself, will will this hurt or wound or drag somebody, someone or or someone's self esteem down? If you if God says He gives you a word for somebody, He speaks a word to you, you need to run it through that that thought process. Will this hurt them or will this uplift them? Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 14 and 4 says this, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesieth edifieth the church. Even so, ye for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. So the whole thing about this whole thing, and, and, and I'm coming to a close here, but the whole thing about this whole thing is the edifying of your brothers and your sisters, the church. We are the church. Everything in your life should be patterned to help your family, your brothers and your sisters in the Lord. So when you get something from God, don't hold on to it and say, oh, thank you, God, I'll take that. Somebody gives you a cake. If God gives you a cake, cut it in half and give some up to your brother or your sister. Let them, let them be uplifted and nourished too. So, so we need to ask ourselves, will this prophecy edify the church or just me? Isaiah 8 and, 8 and 20 says this, To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to his word, it is because there is no light to them in them. Let me read that again. If they speak not according to his word, it is because there is no light in them the word of god is 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 if it don't line up with the word of god there's no light in it there's 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 nothing there hallelujah i I think god he shows us the way he shows us how to do it his word everything we need is in his word and i am so thankful for that that which is genuine leading of god will always agree with scripture or with principle of scripture the word of God is the ultimate primary provision that we have in order to discern that what is good and what is and what is not of God. When trying to determine if if an alleged leading is of God or not, the ultimate question is to ask, does the leading line up with the clear statements of God's word? Everything that I need is in this word. Am I hearing God's voice or is it something other than God's voice. God, teach me to listen to your voice. The psalmist David said it like this in Psalms 28, 1 through 9. It says this, Unto thee will I cry, O Lord, my rock. Be not silent to me, lest if thou by be silent to me, I become like them that go down into the pit. We need to pray and we need to say, God, speak to me. Lead and guide me, Lord. Let me know that you're here. We need to cry out to him. You know, God wants us to cry and seek his face. He wants to talk and commune with us. Hallelujah. If he don't, it's, it's going to be like you're going to go down into a pit. If God don't talk to us, if if you're married and you don't talk to your husband and wife, that relationship don't work. I want my wife to talk to me. My wife should want me to talk to her because there has to be communication there. If you've went through your whole day and haven't heard God's voice, something's wrong. Your communication with God is not right. You need to cry out to God as the psalmist David did and said, Speak to me, Lord. I cry, be not silent to me. Number two says this, hear my vo- hear the voice of my supplications when I cry unto thee. When I lift up my hands toward thy holy oracle, 
Draw me not away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity which speak peace to their neighbors, but mischief is in their hearts. I don't want to be like that, God. I want to lift your, I want to uplift my brothers and my neighbors and my sisters and my brothers. That stranger that I don't know, I want to speak something into his life. And I have to tell you a story right here right quick. I remember in Louisiana, I may have told this story here before, but um, I, I drove a, a big truck and I went to Columbia, Missouri, I mean Columbia, Louisiana, and, and I was ahead of schedule. I, I'd done real good that day, hadn't had anything stop me, and I was two or a couple hours ahead of schedule. And I was coming into Columbia, Louisiana, and I heard something, look, rubber's coming out from underneath my truck. And I'm like, man, and this is in July, and I mean, the, the rain, it don't rain in, in July in Louisiana. <laughs> it's just hot, <laughs> hot and hotter. And so the, the tire man finally got there and was having a hard time getting the truck up because it was so heavy and and. All of a sudden, it just broke out into rain. I'm talking about downpour, white rain. He went and got in his truck, and I went and got in my truck, and was sitting there, and the Lord spoke to me and or impressed upon me. He said, when you get out, tell that man everything is going to be all right. And I'm thinking to myself, I, I don't know him. And the Lord spoke to me again. He said, tell him everything is going to be all right. And I said, okay, God. And as soon as I said, okay, Lord, the rain quit. Got out of the truck, walked back there to him. <laughs> he was already putting them lug nuts on. And, and I said, hey, I said, uh, cause I ain't never done nothing like this before. I said, uh, God told me to tell you everything is going to be all right. He drops the air gun. And I just knew he was going to say some cuss words or something to me. But he began to weep. <laughs> and I told him, I said, the rain stopped as soon as I told God okay. And he began to tell me how he was going through turmoil in his life and that he had once been in this truth and, and all this stuff, and he was backslid. But I told him, I said, that rain was for you. When God speaks, don't never, don't never not do what he says to do. Let him lead and guide you. Mm -hmm. Number four says this. Give them according to their deeds and according to the weakness of the evildoers. Give them after the work of their hands and render to them their desert. Because they regard not the works of the Lord nor the operation of his hands. He does shall destroy them and not build them up. Blessed be the Lord because he hath heard the voice of my supplications. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him. I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices with the, my song. Will I praise him? The Lord is their strength and he is their saving strength of his anointed. Save thy people and bless thy inheritance. Feed them also and lift them up forever. The man of God was praying for the church, for, for God's people. God, hear us, God. God, lead and guide us in all paths of righteousness as you would have us go. God, let me listen to your still, small voice. And, you know, I I, I thought as I was I was coming to a close here in my in my studies I said you know sometimes God will sound like a train horn in our ear but it's only them times that as as mom God spoke to her very firmly get out of the truck find out where Shelly's at I know all of us have come up to a a a, a train track and the bars are down the lights are on but every time that, that conductor pulls that horn, it just sends something through us. Sometimes God has to, we know everything's okay. We're not on the tracks. The lights and the bars are down. But God has to still hit that horn in our life. 
hey, wake up. Danger ain't too far from you. Let me talk to you. Let me lead and guide you. Hallelujah. Everything I taught you came straight out of the, out of the Bible. If you have answers to your questions, you have to study the infallible word of God. You have to study this word. That in that day you will be able to stand. That in that day you'll be able to hear the voice of God and know it's the voice of God. When it really matters, when it really matters, you need to know God's voice. We're coming to a day and time, as, as Brother Stevens was saying, where we, we live in an evil, evil world. We go in evil, evil places. Let God lead and guide you. Listen to the voice of God and know it's the voice of God. I love you all, and thank you very much for letting me come. Can we all stand? Brother Stevens comes, and let's just lift our hands up and glorify God. Praise the Lord.